Congratulations! I, I actually lost a bet because I didn't think you'd, you'd be here this way long. to the end of the Bible study. <laughs> Congratulations! Glad you made it. We've got some really amazing stories left, though. Right, because this week we're talking about act like a witness. Yeah. So. If you recall, last week we left Paul having been arrested by the Romans because they thought he was causing trouble. Turned out it, it wasn't it wasn't him, but it kind of was. Yeah, because he was stirring up all kinds of angry feelings. Mm. Uh, he didn't do anything illegal, which is what the trials really come to find uh, him innocent. But he finds himself moving on, being able to share Jesus with more people. Yeah. And so so it's, it starts with Felix. It does. So tell us about the, the Roman penal system. <laughs> so tell us about the Roman system of jurisprudence. Well, because Paul was a Roman citizen, they couldn't just execute him, which is what they did in a lot of provinces. If if somebody's yeah. causing trouble, let's yeah. just kill him, move on. It'll it'll not a big deal. ease all of the tension. But because Paul's a Roman citizen, that means he has a right to appeal to Caesar, which is crazy because that means in our culture that we would be able to appeal to the president if we didn't think the way the county judge was handling it was proper. Right. But Paul has that right as a Roman citizen. He does. And he exercises that right in these passages. Well, for us, I mean, nearly everybody's a citizen of the United States, but there, there, there just weren't that many people in that area that were Roman citizens. But now... We have Paul, and he is arrested, and uh, and what happens next? So he's uh, being held by Felix. I mean, we go through some great baby names this week. Uh, <laughs> we go through Felix, we go through Festus, and then we go to Agrippa, and there's just a whole litany of sailors with odd names. But <laughs> Paul is in prison with right. Felix. and uh, That's the Roman governor. Right, and uh, he's being held at Caesarea, and he's being held under the jurisdiction of Felix. And every day it says that uh, he actually, Felix actually goes and listens to Paul because after he's heard the accusers and realized Paul's not really in prison for nah. a reason. He just goes to him every day because he's hoping, well, maybe if I just keep visiting Paul, he'll have offer me a, a little bit of cash and then mm -hmm. everybody will look the other way because that's how things were right. done. That's if, what justice is. Yeah, if, if money changes hands, he's innocent. Right. And so he was hoping that Paul would do that, but, <laughs> but Paul's not willing to do that. He actually sees his imprisonment as an opportunity to share Jesus because Felix keeps on coming over and over again. And it says two years he yeah. sits in prison <laughs> as an innocent man for two years. And then they switch governors. Oh. And Felix goes, well, I, I could let him go, but... Well, you know, the Jews will think, you know, very highly of me if I leave Paul in prison. So, <laughs> bye, Paul. See ya. Somebody else will be in who's in charge now. Right. And that's Festus. He becomes the next governor over the area. Yeah. And so, Festus comes down to see Paul. <laughs> and he goes, why are you here? Uh, maybe uh, maybe I should just give you back to your accusers, like send him back to, to the Sanhedrin, send him back to all the people that want him dead. And they had the authority to kill him. That was part of the deal they had with the Romans. And right. so if what Paul was that one thing, the one thing that they could kill people for? Religious reasons. Yeah. So, so oh, you offended me religiously. Up with your head. Exactly. No. So they wanted Paul back. They wanted to be able to uh, execute him for being a traitor. What they said was, Paul had insulted the temple. Mm. Uh, he had caused riots. Mm -hmm. And he had offended Caesar because he wanted the Romans to think they had a good reason to hold <laughs> right. him. And right. that was all the reasons. And so, uh, you know, Festus is thinking, well, maybe I should just hand you over to your accusers. And that's when Paul appeals to Caesar. Right. And so he says, I want to go see Caesar. And they go, oh, man. It's like the one thing that they can't just forget he said. No. 
because once he does that, they can't just say, well, what if we just let you go? How about that? Nope, you gotta go see Caesar. He actually is gonna, it's gonna share take a his while. testimony in front of one more guy, which is King Agrippa, right. who is one of Herod's grandchildren. Right, yeah, yeah. And so uh, Agrippa comes to hear Paul, who mm -hmm. uh, Agrippa is a Jew, and so Paul sees his window and shares his testimony for the third time in Acts. Right. Probably not for the third time ever, but the third time it is listed in the, the book of Acts. Right. Regardless of if we said it that way before or not. I think we did. This is actually the third time. Right, so now Paul's standing before Agrippa and Festus. And there's a big to do, you know, because all these officials are here. And so they drag Paul out in his chains once again. And they go, Paul, tell us all about this Jesus guy. And it says that Paul starts to share his testimony. And at the end of it, they go, Paul, you've lost your mind from all of your education. <laughs> and Paul goes, no, that's it. This is all what I want you to understand, why I'm being held. I want you to know who this yeah. Jesus is. And so Paul gives everything that he has to share his witness before uh, some of the most powerful people. But he's got a date with Caesar. Yes, so he does. So he's got to go. And they put him on board a ship late in the season. They think, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. But it's not. No. No. Not at all. <laughs> Paul is shipwrecked out in the middle of the Mediterranean. Uh, the thing about being a Roman guard is that you are accountable for all the people that are prisoners. And so if you lose one, you trade them. You become the prisoner and you lose your life instead. And so it's a big deal. This The ship is wrecked, you have people scattered all over the place, and what Paul does is he keeps everybody together, and, uh, and the, the Roman guard is about to kill himself because he knows what's coming, and Paul's like, no, 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 we're all here, don't worry about it, which is odd. Yeah, and so it says that, you know, they all, they all land on the island of Malta, mm -hmm. and uh, it's there that Where Paul... Where the falcon is. <laughs> but no? No. <laughs> So they all land on the island of Malta, and it says that Paul's... So they all land on the island of Malta, and it's there Where the that... the falcon is. <laughs> oh, um, that falcon? Uh, yes, on the island of Malta. Um, yes. Yeah, it's because it's Maltese. And as, as they're there, uh, Paul is building a fire, and it says that he gets bitten by a snake. And they're all like, ah, see, he's actually guilty, but the snake doesn't kill him. And, and they go, well, he's a god, and Paul goes, no, no, no. It's Jesus time again. Because with Paul, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Right. He's going to turn that into an opportunity I'm to arrested. share the gospel. I'm going to share the gospel. I get bit by a snake. I'm going to share the gospel. Get in a, get in a shipwreck. I'm going to share the gospel. You know, it's, it's now that he gets to Rome. He's held in a home. Uh, people are bringing him the things that he's need. And that's the end of the book of Acts, is it doesn't even end with Paul before Caesar. It actually just ends with Paul in prison in Rome. But it ends with this great statement. And, it, and this is really what the study keys in on, mm -hmm. is that he continues to share the gospel without hindrance. Yeah. It's actually a pretty good gig because he's in this apartment and people bring him food. He's chained to a Roman guard 24-7. That guy heard the gospel a lot. A lot. Yeah, probably, you know, they trade it out all the time. And he's like, oh, wait, you haven't heard the gospel. Let me tell you, I'm sure that's the way it was working out. And, and the, the book ends on really this happy note, even though he's in prison. Because Paul has this eternal view of his life. It's not about his comfort. It's not about his status. It's, it's not about the things that Jesus can do for him. It's the opportunity to be a witness to all the things that he's seen, all of the church planting experiences, mm -hmm. all of the mm -hmm. ministry that's been done in his life. He views his life in that regard. In one of uh, Paul's letters, he says, I have been poured out as a drink offering. He saw himself as this sacrifice that right. was poured out on the altar for God. And, and that's what he sees this imprisonment is, as the best opportunity to share Christ. Yeah, I'm glad that Luke, when he was writing all this down, didn't go any farther, or, or maybe he finished at that point. We don't really know why the book ends where it ends, except that it's on a happy note, because it Paul's story doesn't end on a happy note. Not, not at all. And so 
we are looking at this idea of acting as a witness, mm-hmm. and, and I think many times, as I was growing up, there was there was this pressure to to share your faith, which is something that we as Christians should be doing. Mm-hmm. But when I see Paul, uh, you know, I see this guy who really has this feeling for reading people mm. and he knows when people are listening and and as he gets these captive mm-hmm. audiences he shares Jesus in a way that makes sense in their culture and I think that as we get opportunities uh, maybe you know it'll be as simple as hey tell me about this Jesus because I've I've had those opportunities, right. but maybe it's right. somebody who's hurting or having a rough day or, mm-hmm. or going through something, and, mm-hmm. and they're looking for just a, a little bit of hope in the midst of that. And I think that that's yeah. where we, uh, we get to be witnesses to the things we've seen, experienced, and heard about yeah. Jesus. Don't be creepy in the way that you share your, your testimony, but you can say I statements a lot. Well, I, I, I can see that you're in a lot of pain, and, and I'm really sorry about that. Let me tell you about what brings me comfort. And you make I statements about it. And uh, really, the wow, you're really going through a lot right now. This might be a good opportunity for me to, to tell you about some of the things that I've gone through and how I came through it. Right. There was a, a guy who I uh, used to go on Mexico missions trips. His, his name is Ed. And uh, he was a pharmacist because we ran this medical clinic. Oh, nice. He would find uh, a kid who had maybe come to Mexico before, but he knew didn't have any, any type of faith. And he would spend all week with this kid. You know, he'd bring him under his, his wing as like a protege and, you know, hey, do you want to give me some extra help that week? No. And he would just, as they were treating people, as they were uh, dispensing medications or helping the people, he would just talk about why he does this, the motivation behind it, who Jesus is and, and how he's changed his life. And many of these kids, by the end of the week, you know, yeah. they're at, at our decision night going, hey, I accepted Jesus today because Ed wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> but there's ways yeah. in which we're wired that God has placed in us that we share the gospel in a way that is just natural. Yeah. And when it's natural, yeah. it's not creepy. Right. So it's just who God made us to be. So we should we should be praying about opportunities. Let God, would you please bring me opportunities some people, though, they, they think, well, I don't have anything to share. I don't have anything in my faith. I, I don't have a story to tell. Well, pray that God would bring you a story to tell. So I guess week seven, we say, get out there and be a witness to the things that Jesus has done. Yeah, this might be a good time as well to have a conversation with your group about perhaps continuing this, maybe starting a new series and, and starting a new book or finding something on the, the YouVersion app that uh, that you could watch a little video and, and read a little devotional and the scripture behind it, and then let that become your devotion for your group. Uh, maybe you're in for that. Maybe you're thinking, please get me out of this. I can't believe I made it seven weeks with these people. And we understand that too. Find another group. Right. And, and just find people that you feel comfortable uh, linking arms with together, sharing uh, things that are going on in your life, uh, praying together, but ultimately launching out to do service projects in the community together, which is a great way to proclaim who Jesus is and bear witness about everything that he's done. Yeah. So get out there and do it.